All right, we are trying to stay safe. I believe for now, considering the virus that is threatening human life and that is threatening the whole world, the best thing we can do to humanity is to stay safe and not to spread the virus, the coronavirus per se. All right. Previously, we had lesson on topic, definitions, and basic con and scope of uh, economics. We looked at some definitions, like that of of that of Alfred Marshall. Yes, we looked at the definition of economics by Alfred Marshall. We also looked at the definition of economics by Adam Smith, which is the father of economics. We also looked at the definition of economics by Professor Lone Robbins. Lord. And we saw the reason why we generally accepted that definition as a comprehensive definition in economics because of the key words he used in his definition. Okay, we looked at the scope of economics and we also looked at importance of economics to man and the society, including you. I gave you assignments and I ask you to define economics in your own words. I also ask you to state any two importance of economics to you. And I ask you where do you think you fall in the scope of economics. I believe that you did that assignment and you have given it to your parents in order for them to mark you on that assignment. If you've done that, well done, my student. Today, we are going to face a new topic. The topic we are going to look at is basic concept of uh, economics. When we talk about basic concept of economics, we are looking at those things which we must encounter or get involved in the course of pursuing our economic and activities every day. But before that, you're supposed to know the lesson objectives. What you're supposed to know at the end of this lesson. You don't just come here and after having lesson, you don't understand anything, you don't know where you're heading to. So I need to let you know where you're heading. So I you channel your mind towards this area. At the end of this lesson, is supposed to be able to define basic concepts of economics. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the concept of wants, the concept of scarcity, the concept of choice, the concept of scale of preference, the concept of opportunity cost, and that of resources. So at the, at the end of this lesson, you're supposed to know this. So bear it in mind and stay focused. At the end of this lesson, you also supposed should be you should be able to draw a table showing scale of uh, preference. I may use your scale of preference. You may tell me your scale of preference, and I'll use it as an example. All right, but for the fact that we are telecommunicating, I will bring down scale of preference, we we'll put it in a table and you understand how it is. All right, let us look at the meaning or definition of uh, how we can be able to define the topic we are about to learn. Basic concepts of economics are those things in which we encounter in the process of carrying out our daily economic activities. I'm sure you, you grab that. I said 
basic concepts of economics are those things in which we encounter in the process of carrying out our daily economic activities and they include the wants, the scarcity, the choice, the scale of preference, the opportunity cost, and resources. These are the things which we encounter in our everyday economic activities. There is no way that you are not going to encounter any of these in pursuing your economic activities. And when we are pursuing our economic activities, there is something we are targeting. What we are targeting is to satisfy our wants. You can see, wants is there. All right, let us go down to them one after the other. Let us look at want. When we talk about want, so you've been hearing want, want, want. I want this. Mommy, I want bread. Mommy, I want tea. Mommy, I will not eat. I will not take tea this morning. I want to eat indomie. You want, you want, you want. Let us look at it so that you understand what you are doing unknowingly. Want. These are needs. Desires, ends, which we require to achieve or satisfy. So, these ones we are talking about, they are our needs. They are our desires. When we talk about ends in economics, if you can refer back, recall the definition of economic, economics by Lonel Robbins. Lonel Robbins mentioned ends and scarce means that have alternative uses so the ends we are talking about here they are the same thing like our, as our desires they are the same thing as our needs we want this we want that so that is to say that when we are learning economics we need to understand how these things works we need to know the concepts that we are involved in so it is a uh, this one makes us to understand how the concept works there are, want is one of the concepts we have about six concepts major concepts all right the second one we have there is scarcity scarcity we are talking about we say this is when things are not sufficient or abundant. When things are not sufficient, when they are not abundant to our disposal, the thing, those things become scarce. And it means limited in supply relative to demand. I don't know if you are getting where I'm going to. Limited in supply relative to demand that means we are going to the things that are scarce are the things that are placed under demand when we demand those things that that is when we are going to look at its scarcity because if those things are not desirable if those things are not demanded for they may not be scarce but so long as demand is being tied to those things you will see those things will now become scarce. So we, that is why I put that statement. It means limited in supply relative to demand. So when things, because there, has, there is nothing now that I will ask you to tell me which are desirable and there are demand of those things that you not tell me they are scarce. They must be scarce. This is how nature made it to be. Those things that we desire, we demand them. They are scarce in one way or the other. We may the supply may be there, but the supply cannot be enough because human human wants are insatiable. 
we keep saying this human wants are insatiable in order in order to make this work we the, the things we need we keep needing even when we think that when we get this we are okay no when we get it we need more so in the course of that the things we are going to use to satisfy those wants they will be limited because you may need it in one particular place they have alternative uses they have uh, alternative uses and that will also make it to be limited in supply of that particular thing you want so it will make it uh, scarce once it is limited in supply it becomes a uh, scarce the third one I have there is choice choice is the art of selecting a want to be satisfied out of many it involves decision making don't forget like I said it is the decision to have one thing instead of the other commodity we are talking about a uh, want we're talking, sorry, we're talking about choice. So choice is the act of selecting things, out of making selection, out of making decision, out of many options you have. You start thinking, will I leave this? Will I take this? So in the process of doing that, you are making a decision. That is decision making. So choice involves decision making and this choice we face, this choice of the commodity we are going to consume, of the things we are going to do to satisfy our human want, we face it every day. The business unit which is the firm, they face it. You as a student, individual, we face it. The government, they face this choice every day in the course of achieving economic uh, activities to satisfy human wants so we make choice considering the one that will be better for us we make choice out of our unlimited wants with respect to our limited resources we now start looking at what to do, how we are going to do it, how best in order to satisfy our wants judiciously. So in that line, we are looking at uh, wants. Therefore, want is, therefore choice is made among alternatives and such economic decisions are made by almost everybody. The individual, like I've said, the government, the business units, in order to satisfy human wants. If government want to cite a hospital now, for example, the government of this country, they want to cite a specialist hospital in charge of a cardiac, a cardiac or heart specialist hospital. Now, they will, they will be faced with many options. Where am I going to cite it? Where am I going to establish this hospital in order to satisfy the wants of my citizens? Am I going to take it to Imo State? How will it be conducive for someone from River State to assess it? If I put it in Nemo State, how will it be conducive for someone in Sokoto State to assess it? Government will be faced with that economic concept of choice. Where will I put it? If in the resources they are going to use, they will still look at alternative way balances. They will still make some choices. Okay, we are going to use this material. There are materials we can use to put this thing in place. Am I going to take this material? 
Am I going to take this material? Which one is expensive? Which one is not? Which one is less expensive? Which one is durable? Which one is not durable? By so doing, they are faced with this concept, with this basic concept of economics. One of the basic concepts of economics, which is choice, decision making. Decision making is critical because if you did not decide very well, your aim will be defeated. So it is critical. It is one of the critical concepts of economics. Because if you did not reason well, if you did not choose well, if you did not decide well, the resultant effect will be, may be disastrous. The resultant effect may be too bad that it, not, it cannot be remedied. So choice is what is faced, a concept that is facing us that we need to calm down. We don't take decision in a hurry. We need to calm down. Try to analyze the outcome, the consequences of any kind of option we are choosing before we now take uh, the decision. You can see it's a concept that is difficult. Not as if it's more important than, than others. They work in they work hand in hand in pari pursuit. The next one I have there is scale of preference. Scale of preference is also another point, another concept we have in the basic concept of economics. When we talk about scale of preference, we are looking at a list of unsatisfied wants arranged in order of relative importance. I have many wants as I'm standing here teaching you. I have many wants. If I list them, start listing them now, I'll start from the most important. I need this. I can't do without this. I need food. Food is very, very important in human life. Without it, I need food. I need clothing. I will not go out naked. So clothing is important. Also, I write clothing. What of shelter? The basic things of life. Shelter. I need to satisfy that one too. I write it down. Shelter. Ah, education. I need to be educated. You write down education. Ah, furniture. You write cars. You write getting married as spouse. You need to go run into expenses. Drink. For leisure. Tourism. Right, leisure. All these things are your wants. Name them many. They are your wants. So when you put them down, you are putting them down accordingly in the order of their relative importance. This one is more important. This one is seconding. This one is following. You put them down. You are trying to put a scale, referencing them. They are they are in, in their priority. This one is more important. This one is not. This one is more important. This one is follow. This one follows. You are putting them down. You are trying to make scale of preference. Then that will guide you. My scale of preference may or will not be able, may, may or will not be the same with your own scale of preference. Scale of preference differs. Individual from individual to individual, government to government. Organizations, business units, it differs. It's not the same thing. What is most important or more important to me may be less important to you. My, I'm, I may choose to have car. Hey, if I didn't get car this month, what will I do? That is what is disturbing me. I'll put it first in my scale of preference. But in your own scale of preference, you may not put food. You may put shoe. You may not put car. You may put shoe. As your the first thing that it is that that is important to you. Now, oh, I need shoe. I need shoe. I need shoe. How will I do it? 
hey i want to go and do page boy for that my uncle is getting married hey daddy i need you when we list down your scale of preference you put that number one so my scale of preference probably or definitely will be different from your own scale of uh, preference we say that it's a list of unsatisfied wants your unsatisfied wants arranged in order of relative importance my own i will arrange my own how it will suit me how important they are to me you will arrange your own then you start looking at how to satisfy them you see you start looking at a way to satisfy your scale of preference that is when you will consider your the resources you have at hand that is when you consider that this is what i have how am i going to satisfy them you can see you may have 10000 naira but judging from your scale of preference your scale of preference may be amounting to 200000 naira how will you go about it what are you going to do to satisfy them you have your scale of preference you've drawn your scale of preference so what you are going to do is for you to start from that the uppermost one the the first one the one that is of most importance to you you start from that one start listing them start looking at them you satisfy this one you satisfy this one you satisfy this one when you want to satisfy this one you touch your pocket there is no other resources for you to satisfy the next Ooh, what you need to stop there that will not take us to opportunity cost when we talk about opportunity costs we are looking at alternative foregone or foregone alternative those things anyway let me tell you what is on the board because i know you are looking at the board opportunity cost is foregone alternative in order to acquire a particular commodity or produce a particular good or service now listen i've made mention of alternative foregone if you call it alternative foregone you're not wrong despite that i wrote foregone alternative where they are the same thing alternative foregone what the what are the things that you left unsatisfied to satisfy these ones like using your scale of preference you've listed them you listed food it may not be the same according to you you still clothes you listed shelter After listing shelter, after listing shelter, you you look at mm, maybe furniture. You look at education. You look at car. You look at drink. Tourism, you want to tour, you want to go out. So, look, looking at this, your scale of preference, you have some amount of money with you, you satisfy this one, you satisfy this one, you come down to your shelter, you satisfy shelter. After satisfying shelter, the money you have cannot go for you to satisfy furniture. Piano. From this place down, they are the opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are not these ones that you satisfied. They are those ones left unsatisfied 
in order for you to satisfy these ones. They are the opportunity cost. So when we talk about alternative for gone, what did you forego in order to get this one? You forgot this one in order for you to get this one. So these ones, furniture, education, car, drink, tourism, and many others that you left unsatisfied, they are the opportunity cost. They are your opportunity cost because you left them unsatisfied. They are those ones that we left unsatisfied in order to satisfy other ones. They sacrifice. Like in some textbooks, you see that they will write opportunity costs that they are sacrifice made for other, with other ones to be satisfied. So you sacrifice furniture, you sacrifice education, you sacrifice, you sacrifice the car, drink, tourism in order for you to satisfy food, clothes, shelter, and many others, as the case may be, judging from your own scale of uh, preference. So, I want you to understand this concept because some students mix it when you ask them this question in exam. Maybe I may be giving you a scale of preference and ask you, I mark some, yeah, you satisfy this one, switch one, what is your opportunity cost? You see them choosing food. I mean, clothes, shelter, that those things are their opportunity cost. You are wrong. Opportunity cost are those ones that we left unsatisfied in order to satisfy the other ones. Opportunity cost are those ones we sacrifice in order to get these ones. They are the sacrificial lamb, yeah. We sacrifice them to get this one. Assuming that this one and in our scale of preference, scale of preference is just we guide you to know what you need most. That is what scale of preference we do to you. To guide you, tell you the things you need most so that you can focus when you have the resources. Because if you don't have your scale of preference, you'll not be guided. So your scale of preference now will now guide you Tell you the things you're supposed to do. Tell you how to manage your resources when you have them. Then, because it is in line with your choice. It is in line with your choice. So, the scale of preference now will not bring it down for you to see at a glance. That's why you put it down. That's why you say it is a list. Of unsatisfied uh, ones. You have not satisfied them yet. Con considering scale of preference. Unsatisfied ones. Arrange because you will take your time. Before you will take your time and arrange them. That means you have taken your decisions. Oh, this one comes most. This one will be the one that I need. I need this one seriously. So it will come first. So you have taken your time to consider choice, to make decisions. Then you arrange them in the order of their relative uh, importance. You arrange them. Then when you have their resources, you start satisfying them. You now pick this one first, you satisfy that one. Pick this one, you satisfy that one. Pick shelter, you satisfy shelter. Now, you don't have resources again to continue satisfying them. As you don't have resources to satisfy them, it becomes your opportunity. Those ones you left unsatisfied becomes your opportunity cost. I believe you are following. Thank you. All right. The last point I have here in basic concepts of economics, the last one I have there is resources. You can see that. Of all our demonstration, of all we are explaining with examples, we cannot say it, we cannot talk, we cannot participate, we cannot take any economic activities without resources. So that means resources, they are important. Yes, 
They are very, very important. There is no way, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? What we are talking about, the base of resources. What we say that we have limited, it's not these resources. We have it. It's limited. So, resources refers to means or basic instruments with which human wants can be satisfied. That is resources for you. Resources we are talking about, they are the means of satisfying your wants. What did you eat this morning or this afternoon? Probably you ate right this afternoon or you ate beans this afternoon or you took a bar and soup. They are the means to satisfy your wants. Before you can prepare that rice, you have your rice, you combine resources together and prepare them together and make them food. So before your wants will be satisfied, we talk about resources. Resources are the means of, our, of us in order for us to satisfy our wants, our limited ones. And these resources, they are limited. I also talk about instruments in the field of production. Whatever you use to get them done, to get things done, to produce something, they are your resources. Resources include time or Time is also one of the resources we are talking about. So, they aid production to satisfy human wants. You go into production, you get hold of the factors of production, they which we are talking about the land, the labor, the capital and the entrepreneur. There are the four factors of production we have. So in order for you to produce, you get hold of these factors. You use the factors to produce. What is, it, what is your aim of producing? Your aim of producing is to satisfy human wants. What is that want? To satisfy human wants. That is the aim of our, produ of our production, to satisfy human wants. Don't forget that resources, like I've said, include time and money. So, you now manage it. You don't have all the time in the world. It's still limited. You now manage it judiciously in order to Produce goods and services that will satisfy human wants. If you want to produce, I didn't decide why. If you want to produce, you didn't draw what you ought to produce, how you're going to go about it, the utmost important, you will lose it. There must be sacrifice. In order to make sure that you use your resources very well. Because we don't want to admit waste of resources. Waste of resources is not what we want to admit in economics. Because how will you be talking about waste of resources when the resources, when they are scarce, when we have limited resources? You want to waste it? No. You don't need to waste it. If you have been wasting resources in your house, reason. Try to stop it. So, my dear, resources. They are the things we use to satisfy our wants. The means we use to satisfy our It may come in terms of raw materials. It may come in terms of our time. It may come in terms of uh, money. So, my dear students, these are the basic concepts of uh, economics. But meanwhile, Meanwhile, we need to still go back 
because I believe by now you can be able to, to define the concepts of economics, explain the concept of wants, the concept of scarcity, the concept of choice, the concept of scale of preference, the concept of opportunity cost, and the concept of resources. And we can also draw your scale of preference. Let me give you that. Let me quickly give you that because time is no longer on our side. All right, let me, I will use my scale of preference to give you the scale of preference, or I will use any scale of preference, maybe a student scale of preference. For example, I have, okay, let me, let me use any name. A kene scale of preference for a kene scale of preference a kene scale of preference for take time. The okay, next scale of preference for Tetan. We have item, we have amount. We have items, we have amount. For example, as he's going to school, he will need school uniform. To inform me cost us three thousand naira. This amount is in three thousand in naira units. If we need pens, which may cost fifty naira, if we need notebooks. You will need sanders. Notebook will cost 1,000 naira. Let me say sanders will cost 2,000 naira as the case may be. You will need wristwatch. Wristwatch may cost us 1,000 naira. So this is example of scale of preference. Now, I want to ask you in a situation in a situation that as a kid is going back to school and the father handed 5,000 Naira to Ekene. Ekene have 5,000 Naira given to him by the father. Now, looking at the scale of preference, looking at the scale of preference, let me enclose this, because this is a table. A table should be duly enclosed. Good. This is a kind of preference for 
this third time. And the father gave him 5,000 naira. Now I am going to leave you here. You will use that as your assignment. Here, I want you to, judging from what Ekene has and his scale of preference, don't forget that this scale of preference is according to its relative importance. Ekene's scale of preference, this is how important these things are to him, not to you. Don't change it, this is what is given to you. So use this and determine the opportunity cost. Thank you very much. My fellow student, my student, <laughs> thank you very much. So I believe that we have tried to look or to cover the objectives of the lesson for today. And I've given you assignment. So like you know, I'm always keeping safe because of this situation we have at hand. I have my face mask, I have my hand sanitizer, I keep this social, social distance of at least 1.5 meters. So my dear students, try to be safe for yourself, for your parents, and for the entire country. Take care, and God bless you.